Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, November 16th, and I miss ya. And I freaking missed you. I was uh, posting on my Instagram story two days ago. And it's at the Rudy Berry on Instagram. And I was asking what kind of content you guys wanted to see for the rest of November. Because December, baby, is going to be all Berry Best Awards and then Worst of 2023. Like, literally, that's all I can fit in for the month is, like, all of my Berry Best. So, for the end of November, I was like, oh, what should we post and the most response I got was vlog and holiday gift guides so I thought why not do both so this week we'll do a vlog and just kind of catch up and then next Saturday we will do a little holiday gift guide video I am really excited for today because the past couple of days I've just felt really told you guys this it's like I'm not motivated I'm feeling like I've lost some of my creativity just because I feel like what's going on is really heavy I want to get back into making some more creative content so um today's kind of the perfect day for that because I'm actually Actually going to a dinner with Kelsey Ballerini a question mark she created a um, eyeshadow with covergirl and it's actually amazing like it is so good it's basically a dupe but better for the glitter and glows from Stila if you remember those so there is a dinner tonight to celebrate the launch and she's gonna be there which is crazy so I'm really excited for that and I feel like I have a lot to do before then I thought we could do it together and sort of like muster up some of our motivation and I always feel like when I talk to you guys during the day and I start to talk like this that it helps me with my videos that I film at the end of the day because I've already talked and I'm feeling loosey-goosey and excited. I'm gonna do that. Um, obviously, we're gonna get ready together. I need to clean up around the house. We'll open some PR. We'll just have a regular schmegular day of what it's like to be me. Starting with coffee. Also, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. I expose myself on the internet daily, so. I'd love to have you around. Let's talk about the coffee situation that I have going on these days. I've just been using my Starbucks K-Cups from this is the French roast. They're fine. They're good. They're nothing fancy. Looks like some mail is here. The barking. The barking of it all. I have summoned them outside. Sorry, I know the lighting's not great. I'm in my little, like, butler's pantry area. So anyways, this is another thing that I put in my coffee to ensure at least 10 grams of protein in the morning. This is the multi-collagen protein powder from Ancient Nutrition. I actually found this brand because my roommate, uh, when I lived in Nashville before I met Reed, used to work for this brand, and I became addicted to this stuff when I would get it for free from her, and now I'm buying it. It's it's completely tasteless. It's like the only collagen powder that I've ever tried that doesn't change like the feel of your coffee or the taste. It's just a, a plain white powder and then I use my little frother to mix it in and you would have no idea that it's in there. And it gives you nine grams of protein or 10 grams of protein per scoop. I just use one scoop because I don't want it to become a little bit chunky and mess up my coffee, but it is a good way to ensure that you're getting a little bit of protein in your breakfast. And then also if you make a smoothie, you can put a scoop in there as well. I will say it doesn't like work quite as well in a smoothie because it needs to dissolve into something warm to like disintegrate completely so I've noticed it can be a little in smoothies. I'm also using this current limited edition nut pod. This is the almond and coconut limited edition holiday nog. I have just been so ahead of the game in terms of the holidays this year because I told you guys in my last video I just feel like it is a place for me to feel comfort to have those flavors and it reminds me of home and of my mom and I'm feeling a lot of discomfort right now as everyone else is. So if I can find comfort by using fun little treats and you know coffee creamers and candles and body washes and that's what we're gonna do and i'm gonna tell you all about it anyways that is a very good creamer i love nut pods i also love that they don't have added sugar most of them this one has a very like light flavor it's very good it's not anything over the top if you like super sweet creamers that's not gonna be the vibe for you i need to let my dogs in because they are acting a mess
I just got a few packages that are completely random and I have no idea who they're from. I honestly get packages like this. Like this says that it's from Laroque Wet n Wild Physicians Formula Lip Smackers. They're all owned by the same company, which is crazy. I didn't realize that. So let's see what this is. I'm guessing it's something from Wet n Wild, but let's see. Marilyn, hold on. Marilyn Monroe X Wet n Wild. Did anyone know about this? Marilyn Monroe Wet n Wild. Honestly, sometimes Wet n Wild comes out with a with amazing, amazing collaborations. And then other times I'm like, what the hell was that? For example, I really thought the Sesame Street collab was so stupid. One of my favorite red glosses I've ever tried came from that collection. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And they always come out with something interesting in their collabs. So Wet n Wild and freaking Marilyn Monroe. There's a ton in here. A ton. Should we look at it? Let's see. We have got, I mean, that's kind of amazing if they matched her actual red lip. Like that's, that would be iconic as ever. But how would they, like who does this? You know, is it her estate? Does she have an estate? You know, I'm curious about those things. Like how do you collaborate with her and what comes out of it. Okay, so the first layer is a translucent setting powder. Interesting. Okay, I don't think I've ever tried this from this product from Wet n Wild. There is a bunch of powder puffs that are really freaking cute. Look at these. You know bows are the moment right now. Oh my gosh, I love that. I don't know if it's necessarily useful, but I like it. There is a red in the shade, doesn't say. It's just Marilyn Monroe, but that is a very pretty red. I mean, I don't know if that's her red or not. That would be amazing if it is. Like if they color matched it or something, I don't know. There's also a lip balm that is, look at that, completely shimmery inside. I bet this is a pH adjusting lip balm. What do you think? Let's see. Yep. This feels really, 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 really slippery, which means it's probably not very moisturizing on the lips. Oh yeah. That's nothing. That's just like smells bad too. It's just a, like a slippery wet lip balm pH. Not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, there is a, I don't know if this is a lip liner or a lipstick in brown or a eyeliner in brown and white and then a red lip liner along with the lipstick and also a red gloss. And this, again, I don't think has a shade name. I think they're just all Marilyn. The shades are very, very pretty though. Like they do look like her iconic red shades. So I'm interested to try it. It also came with um, a blush, a powder blush and two highlighters. So that's interesting. And then the second layer is a little headband, a big pop-up mascara, a clear eyebrow gel, finishing powder. I think this is a dual ended, yeah, liquid eyeliner in black. And this is kind of interesting because it has two felt tips, but one felt tip is a brush and the other one is just like a plain felt tip. So that's kind of interesting. I like that idea. And then a little eyeshadow palette. These are like hit and miss, I feel. Um, but this one is just nice classic browns. I'm sure it's good. Honestly, Wet n Wild is very good for what they offer price wise. I don't necessarily know if I want to keep much of this. I'm sure I'll put a lot of this in a giveaway, which if you don't already follow me on Instagram, I do giveaways on my broadcast channel every single week. They also came with three little powder buffs. So anything I didn't swatch or open, I will put into that giveaway probably just because I don't know that I will be interested in these colors. I also got a package from Crown Affair. I'm actually working with them on a ad for their Black Friday sales, which are very good. Let's see what this is. I love their packaging so much. Like, look at this. The little doodles all over it were drawn by a friend of the founder. I just think that's so thoughtful. And in here we have a mini leave-in conditioner, a mini uh, oil, which I love to put in my travel kits. I love their scrunchies. I have one in right now. Their scrunchies are the perfect, perfect stretch for my hair density. So that is so freaking cute. I wonder if this is a set at Sephora. I love this. Absolutely love this. They're such a good brand. Also, the last thing I got is an order that I made on Rent the Runway because honestly that lip stuff from Wet n Wild made my lips drier. Like, what the hell? I am going to a uh, disco themed murder mystery party tomorrow night and I didn't realize that everyone was gonna be dressing like legit disco, not like funny haha, -ha, like wearing like 
that type of disco. Everyone's going like Studio 54. So I decided to rent the runway because I felt like I needed to live up to my character whose name is L'Oreal. And L'Oreal, Lori is her first name. Al is her last name. She is a hairstylist from Ireland, okay? And this is her outfit. <laughs> Not only is it green sequins mini dress, it has shoulder pads. Isn't that cute? We'll see how it looks on. I haven't tried it on yet, but I just felt like L'Oreal needs to represent her Irish heritage by wearing a green dress. Because she's a leprechaun, she has red hair, she wears a green dress. I need to watch some more Dairy Girls to get this locked in because obviously she's from Dairy. I just took a shower, which is the perfect time to look about your body, look about it, and lament. And this is actually something I feel like I do wanna talk about because I have had quite a journey with the way I feel about my body and I feel like it's not something I've shared on this page before because once you start talking about it, it makes it real and um, I do think that it's something important especially to talk about with other women. But essentially, like most people when they get to their 30s, I have gained weight. I would say I've probably gained, I don't know. 15 pounds, 20 pounds, since I started my Lexapro journey, um, which basically I have OCD and I was diagnosed in 2019, right before the pandemic, which is so cool and fun of them, of them being the OCD in my head. And I was diagnosed, I'm sorry if I'm acting awkward. This is like very uncomfortable for me. I was diagnosed with OCD and was put on Lexapro and it has changed my life for the better. Um, being on Lexapro has made my interest of thoughts so much less it has helped with my panic attacks general anxiety i'm able able to travel i feel better so much better but physically my body has changed a lot and it could be because i turned 30 and that's just what happens to people it could be because of my lexapro it could be a number of things but what I do know is that I am healthy. My doctor has told me my labs are perfect. So I know it's not a health related situation, which almost makes it harder because I also have Hashimoto's, like I have thyroid issues and I am on synthetic thyroid hormones as well. So if you have hypothyroidism, I don't think that's necessarily something I've talked about on this account either very much, but having hypothyroidism was really hard when it was undiagnosed. I was in college. I had gained a bunch of weight actually at at the weight that I'm at now is how much I weighed then. But at the time it was heavier for me in college. And um, I was depressed, anxious, which is all a part of having hypothyroidism. It slows down your metabolism. It can cause uh, mental health issues. It's just not fun. Um, and essentially what it means is your thyroid, which lives right here, um, is not producing the right amount of hormones that it needs to, to function properly. And it is really attached to everything that you do. Um, so, when I was put on medication, I lost a bunch of weight, I got an energy back, and um, learned that I was celiac, aka can't have gluten. All of this happened in the time of my life where I was like 20 to 25. So 20 to 25, I was diagnosed with celiac, hypothyroidism, and OCD. So for that, I was diagnosed and, and medicated for a lot of different things. And I've been now on those medications solidly for five to, you know, about five years, I've been on the same amount. And um, this is just what my body looks like now as a 30 year old woman. And I work out, I eat healthy, I avoid gluten and dairy, obviously. And mentally I'm in the best place I've ever been, but it's hard to see the person in the mirror and think that that's who you are when you have this vision of yourself as someone who is smaller. And this is somewhat something that I talked about in that podcast I did with Olaplex about Botox, where the co-host that I did the podcast with was mentioning that she doesn't feel like herself when she doesn't have her Botox done because she sees angry eyes and wrinkles. And that that's a bigger conversation about society and women's view of themselves in society, especially American society what we've been taught our whole lives about what size we need to be and what we need to look like to feel valued in society. And a huge part of that is being small. The smaller, the better, the younger looking, the better. And when you really think about it, it's quite sick. And I want to make sure that I can identify that within myself so that when I have kids one day, especially daughters and sons, but daughters that I 
and not speaking poorly about myself and can help them recognize that the way you look is not something you can change as much as people like to say it is and also that your value doesn't come from your size um and as a petite person i'm 5'3 i have been told like my during my life especially when i was my smallest like oh my gosh you're so little like i love how petite you are so when you're told those things it's hard to dissociate and to break apart the connection of worth and size but i'm actively trying to do that right now and every day which is really hard because today you know i woke up i was feeling bloated which you know that's just part of being a woman um or having ovaries <laughs> and you know i tried on that dress just now that i was showing you the disco dress and it's a little tight okay i'm still gonna wear it but it's a little tight and you know i just saw it and i saw myself in it and thought oh i would have looked so much better in this when i was this age or whatever and i'm not that age anymore and i don't look like that anymore and that's okay that's just what it is i'm healthy i'm happy my husband loves me i think that there's just you know it's something that we have to actively tell ourselves all the time and i say this to my friends as well that your worth coming from your weight or your body even when i was at my smallest weight i thought that i was fat um, I thought that I was overweight. I thought that I needed to lose weight. So you never really appreciate your body when you have it. And that's really sad. And I don't want that life for my daughters, my younger generation that comes after me. I want people to appreciate the way you look at yourself versus the way that other people look at you is so vastly different. And I just wish that I could see myself through the lens of my husband, my mother, my friends, and that um, other people could do the same. Anyways, I just wanted to talk about that because I was feeling it really heavily just now when I was in the shower. And um, I know it's a universal experience with women and men, but definitely with women that are around my age. I'm 30. So yeah, yeah, um, you know, they talk about like recently people have been saying like, what's your Roman Empire? And I would say for a lot of women, their Roman Empire is their weight and their body. Anyways, I can't cry about it because I'm on Lexapro and thank God for it. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's today's little rambling about being a woman in society. It's a joy, truly. Okay, so since we are going a little bit heavier on the eye makeup tonight, I want to make sure everything else is really sleek and minimal when it comes to my outfit and the rest of my hair and my makeup. So I was thinking let's do a slick back for the makeup because I want the eyes to kind of have that like really lifted look to them So I think adding in the hair will kind of help with that lifted look. Also, here's where I'm at with my armpit eczema Getting a little bit better. Um, but I was going through it pretty bad during the fall Um, so anyways, so typically what I do for a high lifted pony like this for my short hair is um, a mixture of things but first and foremost we need to brush it oops this is the brush from Maine which is Maine Addicts um, Jen Atkins hair brand um, outside of way and it's like a little bit more playful and young and this is a really nice brush because it actually massages the scalp because it's got like steel bristles and I find that it really helps to get every single piece of hair come through which I love. So I'm going to spend some time brushing. I also have dandruff right now because every time I go in to get my roots touched up, they get really dry. Um, my whole scalp gets super dry and um, I try and go longer in between wa washes right, right after I get my hair done because I obviously want it to last and I always end up getting crusty scalp. So that's fun. I'm gonna use a mixture of products today. I'm pretty sure I've done this before so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this with you guys. But we, we have a lot of different products that is being used in this sort of tutorial. I'll be honest with you. It's a lot. A lot goes into it when you have short hair. I used to be able to just throw it up, but now I can't. So to start, I'm going to separate. Actually, not first. I'm going to take this. This is the ACV Daily Scalp Serum from DP Hue. And I like to put this throughout my scalp, especially when I am having dandruff. You can use this every single day. And it just helps clarify the scalp. Um, and since my hair is going to be pulled back, I just like to take the time to kind of use treatments on my scalp since it's going to be full of product anyways and it also kind of helps add a little bit of um, liquid to the areas of my hair that are just like hard to get through if that makes sense oh it's dripping so then it kind of allows for the gel and everything else to sit a little bit easier because my hair is a little bit softer from the liquid i'm just gonna massage that into my scalp they also have a scalp serum that you could use 
that I use once a week as well. This one, this is like a pre-shower exfoliation. This one actually exfoliates. That one is just like a daily use serum. So pick your poison vibes. Then I'm gonna take this section here in the front and clip this up while I focus on the rest of the hair. My cowlick is my back right section here. This section of hair is incredibly hard to lay down in any direction besides the direction that it wants to go. So I usually try and spend a little extra time with my hair gel back there just to help get it saturated at the root. Wherever your cowlick is, it's what's gonna cause you the most problems when it comes to any hairstyle, especially if you want something to lay in a certain way. So I just kind of massage it in so that later when I'm slicking it, it's not so crazy. There's only so much you can do for a cowlick. You could use either of these. I like to use them both depending on what I'm planning to do with my hair the next day. So I've had this hair dirty for a while now, so I am planning on washing it tomorrow. So in which case I will use my Garnier because it has a very strong hold. If I'm planning on um, brushing my hair out and maybe doing another hairstyle tomorrow, I will use the finishing gel from Crown Affair because you can actually brush through it. So I am going to just take a large amount of the gel and start to push back this top layer and evenly distribute it on the scalp. You also want to make sure you get some on your under layer. I feel like some people forget about that until the very end and then they have all the hair hanging out the back of their hair, but sometimes you can do a little flipper room. Hit the bottom, hit the sides. I really love that stuff. It's the best gel. And I just kind of keep pushing it back into that direction where I want it to go. And again, because we're going a little bit higher today, start to push it up towards that. I do always have to wash all of my brushes when I'm done doing a slick back because they get covered in goo. You can start with really any kind of brush. I'm using my Crown Affair number two to get all the hair into that area. They also have the number one brush, which is amazing for uh, the actual slick back portion, but we'll get to that. So we're just putting it in a normal ponytail at this point. Then I am taking my Boar Bristle brush. This one's from Conair. I literally got it at the drugstore, like at Walgreens. And I start to push that hair back and that's what's gonna give it that slick look. You have to have a Boar Bristle brush to get that sort of look because it really smooths down all of the strands. Then you can kind of put it in any old ponytail. I'm just taking a scrunchie and putting that back. We will be revisiting that shortly. 30 minutes later. Um, I don't know what came over me, but I had a poop attack slash a fart attack. So it's now been 30 minutes and I had to poop like this. And that is feminism. Um, okay, so I'm trying to decide if I wanna have some of my bangs out or not because I did cut them, so it's like, show them off, cutie pie. But also, don't wanna take away from the makeup look. Maybe we should just keep it like this. But I did see Hailey Bieber, she's kind of my hair inspo when it comes to the bob styling. I saw she did a look where she left a little bit of her bangs out and then had the rest slicked back, and she curled them, these little pieces, see, look, and then had the rest slicked. I think that could be really cute. And then if I decide that I don't like that, I'll just slick them up, I'll slark them up. So I'm gonna keep these two pieces down and continue on. We are just going to add even more gel and really saturate these front pieces because this is the cream of the crop when it comes to having that super slick look. Also, every time I do this hairstyle, I think about how Latina women have been doing this hairstyle for ages. I went to a high school that was very, very multicultural. Um, it was 85% black and then Hispanic and then white, which was the best experience of my life and something that I really cherish and something that is really important for me when I'm having kids to make sure that they go to a school that is really diverse. Um, but I just think about all the girls at my school who did this hairstyle and um, now it's just like fully in style, but I wanna make sure that I acknowledge the fact that the Latina women have been doing the slick back and the, and the freaking hoops and the gold jewelry way before it was considered the clean girl look. I'm just saying, this is actually a little bit harder than usual because of the bang, the bayangs, but I pretty much just slick the hair back until it gets to the ponytail. And then I take out the ponytail we put in earlier and I connect the two. The problem is I sat on the toilet for 30 minutes. So the gel from the bottom half is like fully dried. So we might have to do some, some magic to get it to slick back. Also, I have what i don't know how to con like what to consider it but i have hair that is fine but i have a lot of hair so it's not necessarily thick hair but i have a lot of it so it can make the slick backs kind of hard for me because there's always hair going somewhere i think we might need some more gel yeah we need some more gel up in this piece it's crazy how much gel i go through in one sitting of one of these hairstyles 
Like, I was researching how hairstylists do this on short hair because it is not easy. And I read that a lot of them have, well, first of all, there's like multiple people working on one hair at a time, but also that they use heat and like dry the back of the hair so that it is like while the gel is in, it's like drying so it keeps it up. It's like a multi-person job just to get someone's hair into a damn slick back. But I'm just a one woman show, you know? I'm just doing my best out here. It is just about patience and brushing and upper body strength, okay? You gotta have arm strength to continue to brush your hair into the same position over and over and over and expect different results, which I do believe is the definition of insanity. We're getting there. And also if I don't like the little pieces out, we're gonna have to start over. I feel good about this. We're gonna stick a legitimate ponytail in here now. See how this turns out. I'm doing a full ponytail and it's pretty tight in there because of the gel. Also this little section is kind of making me be like, okay, cute bangs, but no. I'm not doing that, don't worry. Don't you worry. And then I'm gonna take my boar bristle brush and just continue brushing. I'm not feeling very confident about this one. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Am I ever confident about them? No, but let's see how this looks. No, oh, it's cute. It's cute. Okay, so then, although this side is shorter than the other side, we don't have time to deal with that. So then I'll take a, these are the best little elastics ever from uh, Kitsch. No snag elastics and I get them in like the brown shade. And these are the best for doing like a bun on the back of the hair. So I'll basically take it and twist it until I get some sort of spiky situation. And it looks like that. Then I'll kind of play with it a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. But it just makes a little bun up there. It's kind of cute. And then I'll like pull little pieces out here and there. And bam. Then I'll take something like a stick. I mean, I'm telling you guys, there's so many steps to this. And I'll push back the hairs that are around my ear and then under my neck because those sometimes don't even get it and just anywhere i feel like definitely up here it's looking wonky over my cowlick and then i take these clips these have a barrette on the back they are iconic i got them on amazon i can link them down below and i just push up any hair in the back that i feel like is probably gonna fall and i just have to redo this all night long because that is the joy of having a bob. The joy of having a bob is constantly having to put clips in your hair and put them back in and out. It's really a joyful experience. But with this, it does help a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. People say that my slick backs are very slick, which I appreciate, but as you can see, it takes a lot. A lot of work to get them slicked, and a lot of times they don't even stay. So, see look, we already got a piece flying out. Mm. You just gotta be okay with that. You gotta be okay with failure. I'm being so dramatic. That's gonna be it for now, and then I think I will add some hairspray before I go. And I'm just gonna put a little curl in the bangs. Then we'll go upstairs and start makeup. Hi! Okay, so I did my makeup because I realized I was on a little bit of a time crunch. So I had to do it because I'm working with CoverGirl uh, on an ad for these, and so I just had to put the pedal to the metal and get to work. Um, but I will tell you, I think the eye look is stunning. It really took quite a little while to get there. Whenever I'm doing like an actual creative eye look, I always start with my eyes. So I use this palette from uh, YSL. It's their mini couture clutch palettes. This one is in the shade 200. And I use these mattes to achieve this look before adding the glitter. I think this is okay. The mattes are nice, but they kick up a lot a lot like i don't think that this is necessarily worth the price even though it is stunning because the pigment just kicks up everywhere so that was my matte lay down before i went into the glitters with all of these beautiful shades from this covergirl line these remind me so much of the stila glitter and glows i think i mentioned that they're all in rose gold shades which is why i went for two of the more like standout shades for my look i feel like these three look kind of similar in the tube so i used these um, cause they were a little bit more standout-y. The names aren't actually on here, but I, I tried to base the whole look around this maroon shade. I think it's in the shade forever. That's what's on my lid. And then I took a little bit of the pink shade, which is number two, and put that in the inner corner. And then the gold shade is in my, or this is in the 
first quarter of my eye, I put the gold shade in my inner corner. It's super pretty. And then on my lips, I'm also wearing CoverGirl. I started with the um, Makeup Forever Pencil and Wherever Walnut. And then I'm using the Yummy Gloss in the shade Sunset Skies, which is just a really pretty glossy nude. So I will be bringing that. And then for blush, I wore a mixture of two Makeup by Mario shades of the Blush Pop Veil. Um, the shades Berry Punch and Rose Crush are what's on the eyes. So it's very pretty. Um, I never wear this much makeup, but I do think like for an event like this, you gotta ball out. I'm about to meet her. This is her collection. And I think that she will like the look. It's super pretty. Um, they do not smudge or budge once they're on the face and they have a stunning glitter. So I think these are super pretty. They might be limited edition. I'm not totally sure, but um, definitely, definitely recommend them. They're so, so, so pretty. So the jacket is from my friend Kelsey, Kelsey Light, if you know her. She's an influencer here in Nashville. She's a mid-sized fashion creator. She collaborated with Beachy on a collection and she has this gorgeous, gorgeous um, maroon shade trench coat in the collection that I picked up and it is stunning. It just makes you look amazing. Look at this. It's sickening. It's absolutely sickening. I don't know if you can see very well. Hold on. Isn't that gorgeous? It's almost a floor length. It's not all the way, but it's very close. It's stunning. It's not too warm. Um, I think it's fake leather. It has these little like, I don't know what these are called, breast, breast thingies. Um, and I think it's stunning as an outfit in its own with these boots. Um, and I also think it looks really nice just kind of draped open. So I am planning on wearing it like this and then if I get hot, I'll take it off. But I think it's so stunning and it just makes an outfit. Like you don't have to have anything on, <laughs> anything cute on underneath and it just makes the whole look. So I think it looks really pretty with this eyeshadow as well. It just pairs it in very well. I was gonna wear a maroon, um, purse as well to go with the jacket, but I'm just gonna carry my little Prada bag that I got in France with Reed. I think it's just classic and it'll kind of match the boots and the leather look. So this is the final look. I don't know how far back I need to go for you guys to fully see it. But yeah, I love it. It's very leather. It's very uh, Kai coated, which is the new Kylie Jenner brand, um, but it's from Vici, Prada, DSW. So very cute. Um, I will have my editor put in videos of the event at the end because I am doing like an event vlog with CoverGirl. So I'll have that in at the end so you can see what it was like and hopefully I'll get to meet Kelsey and hopefully she likes my eyeshadows and she says something about it. But anyways, this was great. I'm really glad that we got to hang out together today and actually chat. So let's do this more often. One, two, I never get to do events like this. So it's fun to like get ready for them with you. But also um, I will see you next week for a holiday gift guide. And we'll talk about makeup, skincare, and also just like home stuff for him, for her. I'll try and break it down as much as I can. But anyways, I love you guys. Um, thank you so much for being here. I hope you like the outfit and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye. <laughs> So cute. And I stood at the front of the class with like this table and I walked out oh. and I failed. <laughs> so <laughs> this is not where I shine, but um, I am such a girly girl, like to my core. And I look around and I see that and like all of the glitter in the outfit.